So coming off episode 9, we found ourselves finally on a trail for something much bigger, and with new developments taking shape, a cooldown period is needed to further certain relationships before the next conflict arises. From the bonds between these characters to major plot points at hand, everything is built up brick by brick, and we can see from episode 10 moving into episode 11's content, things pick right back up after a few things were crossed off the checklist. In this week's review, we're covering episode 10 and 11, and once again, I apologize apologize for the delay, exhaustion did catch up to me and I needed a bit of a recharge. As far as episode 10 goes, chapters 26, 27, 28, and 37 were adapted with adjustments that connected all four together, of course coming at the cost of some cuts of dialogue and interactions here and there. Definitely a bit of a bloated episode considering majority of the content is more family based, but the main points were gotten across with the most important being at the beginning of the episode. With the beginning in mind, we come to the Hinegiku hot pot content, and while things get out of control with the food, the takeaway is Tayo's feelings about the truth. There's a common phrase being that the truth will set you free, but in this story's case, we'll only manage to pull him deeper into the thick of the underworld. We saw what happened when Kurogao knew who killed his daughter, and Tayo was aware of the effect that the truth might have on him too. Going as far as to say that he sympathized with him in that moment, and you can't blame him for it whatsoever. With the way spot are portrayed in the series, it's not necessarily purely black and white, there's a grey zone they exist in. As much good as Tayo does, those negative feelings could lead him to do something bad, and we see him express those thoughts, giving us a bit of introspection into how he feels after such a revelation about his family's accident. He's afraid of that change that could occur, and without hesitating, Mutsumi kisses him, giving him some reassurance. No matter what challenges they may face, a husband and wife are going to keep each other grounded with her declaring that even if he does change, she would still be by his side. If this isn't the definition of ride or die, then call me blind, but this right here is why we love these two together. Tough times are ahead, and it's moments like this that are going to always keep replaying in Tayo's mind when it does in fact get rough, and as always, the marriage continues to ascend to better heights. To wrap up this section, we see that inside the box is a glass marble in which Xion takes and works on. This is one of those sort of background developments developments taking place, as even though we see all these other developments throughout the episode, we cannot forget that the contents of the marble are being deciphered, and when it's time to come back to it, it'll be perfectly in place. Now, as for the rest of the episode, we've got sectional developments that can be divided up into three parts. First up, Ayaka is now working as a maid for the Yozakuras, while also training Tayo's anti-assassination skills. If you remember back when I covered her introduction, I mentioned that she would be a character that makes it to the end of the series, and now you can see as to how and why. Now I do want to say that because of how much this episode covered, a good bit of the antics that occurred was pretty much trimmed out, so I do encourage going back and reading chapter 27 if you are interested in the full picture. The bath scene removes some inner thoughts that would have come from the results of the training spurring from those antics, so if you get some time, by all means feel free to double back. Now chapter 37's content manages to weave itself into the middle of 28, and with chapter 28 we get the supposed cheating chapter, and after everything we have seen from Tayo thus far, we know that is far from the truth. Ayaka attempts to instill some ideas in Mutsumi, but as I said before, ride or die even in faith, and she's not falling for it. As to why Tayo was sneaking around and having some unusual activity patterns, we come to find out why after the content within chapter 37 takes place. Outside of Kyoichiro, the one family member that did not mess with Tayo was Goliath. Since he began living with the Yozakuras, Goliath clearly doesn't mess with Tayo like that, and in this section, we finally see him come around. Now we know that he isn't just a normal dog given he was the driver of one of the more recent impressive car chases, and we come to find out that he is an Okami dog known to be the elite guard dog of the family. Every member of the family has their quirks, and in this case, Goliath can grow to quite a large size. How big he can actually get is something you'll just have to wait and see, but between him dragging Tayo across a lake on a walk and taking down an assassin, he is clearly no pushover. Now what gets Goliath to finally accept him is Tayo being able to pull ahead by one step, not only protecting Mutsumi from the bomb, but even himself when it's his job to protect Mutsumi already. It showed him that the family head's husband is not that bad, and so now he learns to accept him. At this point, Tayo's pretty much cool with everyone in the current present family, that is minus Kyoichi. 
Ichiro. Now with the rest of chapter 28 coming back towards the end of the episode, we bring the supposed Taiyo cheating back up and right when all hope seems lost, we come to find out that what was really going on was a transaction with good intentions behind it. A thorough search for tea leaves all in consideration for Kyo Ichiro. Regardless of the antics he's been put through by Kyo Ichiro, Taiyo holds no ill will and as such tends to show that through simple gestures. It's acts of kindness like this that represent the meaning behind Taiyo's name being the sun, as no matter what, he manages to shine through even if it involves somebody that kinda hates him in a brotherly manner. With all that being said, episode 10 can pretty much be summarized to be the calm. Just getting a moment to breathe and enjoy these characters and further certain relationships before we pull away from the peacetime and move back to the action. I know they may not be the most interesting pieces of content, but this all serves a purpose and with family being a central theme, this is all going along with the established recipe since chapter 1. Now episode 11 begins to pick momentum back up with chapters 29 and 34 being adapted and connected with some changes to the content here and there which gave the second half of the episode a bit more life to the exam being taken. The way these two chapters are connected lies within the anime only addition towards the beginning of the episode. While the Yozakura pitcher training was adjusted, that itself was the beginning of chapter 29. The explanations of the spy license and the family album was all anime original and you can see how they managed to ensure it all came together. Now starting with chapter 29, we finally arrive at some long awaited Futaba content and as tough as she is, her one weakness happens to be fear of scary things. Truly a dilemma considering she has quite the aptitude to go at it with Kyo Ichiro, but not even in the role of big sister does it mean she's invincible. This isn't the first time we've seen fear hold on to a family member so tightly and as such Futaba is the equivalent of a cat throughout the entire first half of the episode. Holding on to Mutsumi for dear life and showing her childish side at any opportunity given. The anime ended up swapping out some gags with new ones as the family excluding Shion was not in the chapter at all. I think at this point it's pretty fair to say that when shenanigans take place in the house, the staff are going to ensure that everyone can be involved to some degree and honestly that isn't a harmful thing in the slightest. Again, knowing the central theme, this is nothing short of taking advantage of what can be possible. Now Futaba is one of my favorite characters and outside of her design and strength, she has layers onto her that tie deeply into her position as the eldest sister of the family. It's been known now that the Yosakura's parents are unfortunately not around and one figure that constantly comes up is the mother or former head of the family. With her passing, Futaba came to a similar understanding that Tayo felt back in the beginning of the series being that there are just some things out of your control in life. In her case, she ties this idea to her strength and that even if you were the strongest entity on the planet, death will always overcome training. It's a realization that instilled a fear into her towards things she cannot control, the intangible so to speak. Death being a concept naturally would fall into this category and so rather than let her siblings see this side of her, she goes along with the assumed reasoning that her family members have concluded at. I cannot stress enough that every critical Futaba moment in the series always delivers and with this being the first major serious moment between her and Tayo, I really appreciate how it was handled in the anime. I also appreciated that the staff didn't let some of the more comedic parts of chapter 29 interrupt this moment but instead added a small addition to the episode for consistency that led to the second half. Very good and self aware changes. Now with the rest of chapter 29 being pushed towards the end of the episode, we push on to chapter 34 and that's Tayo's spy license exam. Our new character this week is Sukiyo Hoshifuru aka the playboy of the spy world. Reminiscent of Kyo Ichiro in many ways and doubling down with his antics being directed towards men or women alike. His presence adding a bit more exhaustion onto Tayo given he's already on edge but even so that won't stop him from doing what he must to pass the exam. Obtaining this license opens up a lot of opportunities down the line and as always keep in mind that information is a weapon in the hands of the right person. Now as far as the test goes, the anime did have some additions and changes here and there to make it not so full of still frames and you can see just how hellish it can really be even if it is the bronze exam. In the end, just reaching the license was not easy and we come to find out that there is a real test within the test itself and it's aimed at one's humanity. Trust is the foundation for the spy world and with so much betrayal and backstabs that Kyo Ichiro mentioned back in episode 2, the real test was seeing if your actions were honest enough to be worthy of the spy association. Once more, Tayo's 
good nature shines through, and as such, he manages to pass the exam, with the playboy being his undercover proctor as a surprise development. Another milestone that will serve Tayo well in the coming storm of events, and overall pushes him in the position he needs to be when we come back to the marble data being deciphered. To wrap up the episode, we get a mix of anime original content with the manga content as the family decides to take a photo to commemorate the occasion. Kyo Ichiro falling through the roof and Futaba learning that he was the one responsible for the pranks is the rest of the chapter 29 content that was moved to the end of the episode. If you're wondering what in the world you saw at the end of last week's preview, now you understand what happened. A win for Futaba, a win for Tayo, and a win for me with another solid episode for Yozakura family this week. Looking ahead, we got some brand new casting announcements this morning for the upcoming characters, and for my manga readers out there, I'm sure you know which one piqued my interest the most. The next episodes will be introducing some new favorites I'm sure, and we definitely will be pushing into the study portion of volume 5 content, which I am very excited to see given our main antagonist for act 1 will finally make their debut. With that ladies and gentlemen will bring me to the end. As always, thank you very much for watching, and please make sure to leave all your thoughts about episode 10 and 11 in the comment section down below. Stay safe out there, and I will see you all next Sunday for episode 12 as we near the horizon for Core 2.